This is the notes for section 2.4, uh, title of which is Good Definitions. Uh, you should have already read section 2.4. If you haven't, make sure you stop the video at this time and go through and do that. Um, in geometry, a good part of this course is specifically defining things and then using those definitions in application type ways uh, to solve geometric problems. So we really have to look at what really makes something a good definition and there's three properties that we're going we're, we're to use in terms of determining whether a definition is a good definition or not. The first one is it uses only words that are either commonly understood, defined early, earlier, or purposefully undefined. Okay. Number two, it accurately describes what is being defined. And number three, it includes no more information than is necessary. So when we define something, we want it to accurately describe it. We want to use only words that we know. And we also want to um, make sure that it's, it's as, as, as succinct and, and as, as efficient as possible when we make that definition. Okay, so the first definition we want to look at is a definition of a midpoint. And here is the definition that we're going to work with for midpoint. A midpoint of a segment AB, okay, so that's what we're defining, is the point M on segment AB with the distance from A to M equal to the distance from M to B. Okay. That definition, or this definition, satisfies all three of the properties that we defined earlier. Okay, let's take a look at example one here. It says, um, why is each of these not a good definition of endpoint? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to really refer to which of the properties are being violated from above. So it says, an endpoint of segment is a point on the end of the segment. Why is that not a good definition? So we want to think about that. Well, the reason why that's not a good definition is because, as you can see here, the statement uses the term end, which was not previously defined. Okay, we have some, we have some general knowledge of what end is, but we, have, we don't have that as a defined term. So it, it violates that first characteristic or first property that we've listed. Okay? Part B, it says an endpoint of a segment is a point on the segment. Well, if you think about that, that does not accurately or is, it's not a clear way of describing that. So the statement is not clear because it does not distinguish an endpoint from any other point on the segment. And finally, the last one says an endpoint of a segment is one of the points that is furthest from the midpoint of the segment and there is no point on the segment on one side of the endpoint. Well in that situation we just have too much information. Okay, The statement contains too much information therefore it violates the third property that we've looked at. <laughs> At this time, we want to look at, look at definitions as biconditionals. So every good definition can be written as a conditional and its converse. Therefore, every good definition can be expressed as P implies Q and Q implies P. This can be abbreviated to P and then a double arrow Q, which we read as P if and only if Q. This is called a biconditional or an if and only if statement. Okay? The key thing here is that every good definition can be written as a conditional and its converse. In other words, every good conditional, every good definition can be written as a biconditional. Okay, so let's take a look at that term, the one term that we've we've defined with a good definition so far, midpoint, and let's look at it as a conditional and its converse, and then we also want to look at it as a biconditional. So as, as a conditional and its converse, we're going to say if M is the midpoint of AB, then M is on AB and AM is equal to MB. So I have the term, which is M is the midpoint of AB. That's, that's what we're trying to define. That's the if part. 
The then part is the characteristics of that term. Okay, M is on AB and AM is equal to MB. Okay, we can also write the converse of that. So I'm going to take the characteristics, or in this case the consequent, and write it as the antecedent and put the term, the antecedent, as the consequent. So if M is on AB and AM is equal to MB, then M is the midpoint of AB, the term. So when I'm when I'm writing a conditional and its converse, I'm thinking about the term and the characteristics of that term, and then I'm going to switch where they are. Okay? Well, if I then take those two things and, and write that as a biconditional, I'm going to take the two statements, M is the midpoint of AB, and the statement M is on AB and AM is equal to M, MB. And I'm going to link those two statements instead of having an if and a then, I'm going to link these two statements with if and only if. So a biconditional for this would be M is the midpoint of AB if and only if M is on AB and AM is equal to MB. For a biconditional, we always link the two statements, the antecedent and the consequent, with if and only if. <laughs>so now let's look at a second good definition and we're going to look at the term circle now so a good definition for a circle is a circle is a set of all points in a plane at a certain distance its radius from a certain point its center okay so we have um, we have a definition now that meets all three of the criteria or the properties of a good definition so now what I want to do is, I, and I've just kind of copied example two from your book here in your notes because I think it's a, a very good example of, of kind of what we just did where we, we, we write a conditional, we write its converse, and then we can write it as a biconditional. So it says, write the conditional part of the definition of a circle in the direction term implies characteristics. So the term is if... Now, so think about that now from, from before. If something is a something, that something, when we're, we're talking about a circle, is a figure. So if a figure is a circle, then it is a set of points in a plane at a certain distance from a certain point. So that's the term implies the characteristic. Now, if I'm going to go the other way, characteristic implies term, which is what part B is asking us to do. If a figure is a set of all points in a plane at a certain distance from a certain point, then it is a circle. Okay, so your your antecedent and your consequent, your antecedent is a figure is a circle. Your consequent is uh, the set of all points in a plane at a certain distance from a certain point. Okay, that would be the 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 um, the characteristics of a circle. Okay. So part C then says write it as a, as a biconditional. Well, then I'm going to link those two things with if and only if. So a figure is a circle if and only if it is the set of all points in a plane at a certain distance from a certain point. So that would be a biconditional for this definition. So now let's take a look at, exam at number three here. It says, a right angle is an angle whose measure is 90 degrees. So why don't you pause the video at this time and see if you can do that. Actually, see if you can do parts A, B, and C, and then I'm going to go through those answers in just a minute. OK, so here's the answers to that example three. Um, it says write a conditional uh, term implies characteristic. Well, if an angle is a right angle, then its measure is 90 degrees. And then if I turn that around for characteristic implies term would be if an angle measures 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. And finally, part C is write the definition as a bicondition as a biconditional. Now I'm going to link those two things with if and only if. So an angle is a right angle if and only if it measures 90 degrees.